Admit it, with the Canon EOS R5 around the corner, all us Sony users are thinking it. If those specs are true, I'm gonna to switch to Canon. Now, if you're a video shooter, then I won't blame you for thinking like this, but there are some things to consider before you make the switch, and that's what I wanna go through in this video. By the way, do leave a comment below with your opinion, whether you're a Canon user or a Sony user, or you're thinking of switching between them. And if you do go on to enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more content like this. Now, I went out and hired Canon EOS R, the 24-105 um, f4, the 15-35 2.8, and the 50mm 1.2 from Canon's test drive service. Um, this is really cool, it lets you hire like, out a ton of cameras and lenses from Canon for free for 48 hours. So this is my experience using it and whether I think it's worth going over to the Canon system yet. Now this video will be focusing on video shooters and primarily those people that own the A7 uh, series camera already um, and are thinking of switching over to Canon. It's not a direct comparison between any camera or really a comparison between any system in a way. It's more whether it's worth switching between one or the other. Let's start with the reason we're all thinking of dropping the Sony A7 at the moment and that is the Canon EOS R5 specs. Now you've got 8K internal RAW, you've got 4K 120 frames per second, you've got built-in IBIS, which has got to be better than the Sony's, right? And probably even that digital image stabilization might stick around, um, which is actually very, very good. Now there's some skepticism about whether this is completely true and whether Canon will cripple something in order to get that 8K, but this video is gonna be talking about if all those specs are correct. Now a lot of people are saying you don't need 4K 60 to make good films, why are you Sony users complaining? Well, obviously you don't, but, it just gives so much more wiggle room um, for cropping if you deliver in 1080, for slow motion, having to choose between HD and slow motion and 4K and not slow motion is such um, a creative annoyance when you're trying to film uh, something and you have a vision for it, especially when the Sony HD is a little bit soft at times. Not to mention that 10-bit actually gives us a reason to shoot in log um, because you can colour grade it without it completely falling apart. And so for these reasons, I think that the Canon EOS R5 specs are on par for 2020 um, and how they should be. And Sony's still playing catch up there. So moving on to the actual camera bodies now. Like I said, I've got a chance to play with the Canon EOS R and the first noticeable thing was the size difference. The EOS R does feel bulkier and actually feels a little bit less well built as well in terms of the quality um, of the materials used but that grip is bigger, and so if you're a fan of shooting handheld, or if you're a photographer, I guess, um, then you're gonna enjoy that bigger grip. It just feels more sturdy when you're holding it, um, which is always good. But Sony have been updating that on the Sony a7R 4 so I hope that grip comes to Sony a7 cameras in the future. I do prefer the button layout on the Sony's. Um, I think they're a lot more customizable and just in a better position in general. And also that analog stick on the top is much better than the Canon EOS R um, touch bar. And also the um, little scroll wheel around the menu is quite handy as well for changing shutter speed or ISO, um, which I quite like. But the Canon EOS R5 is actually set to have both of these, I believe. And the most noticeable difference is the flippy screen. It's great for filming yourself like this or just for vlogging. Um, Canon came straight into the mirrorless game with their flippy screens. Sony users have been asking for it for so long, we've yet to get it. Although I do have a theory on that, which I'll come back to later. So most people could get used to both bodies. I don't think there's a huge difference. That flippy screen could be a deal breaker for some people. But again, we're talking about switching between uh, systems. And I think that someone switching from a Sony A7 uh, III to a Canon camera would notice the difference between those customizable buttons. Now we come to lenses and lenses are one of the reasons that I would say for Sony users not to switch to Canon. Now our Sony users have got a load of lenses, um, lens options from Sony and from third parties like Tamron and Sigma as well. And I'd say Canon is still lacking a little bit in their RF lenses. Not only is there not a massive choice, but they're also eye-wateringly expensive, they're big and they're bulky. Just look at this Sony 55mm 1.8 compared to this Canon 50mm 1.2. Now obviously you do get an 1.2 and you get inbuilt uh, stabilization on the Canon lens, but it is a lot bigger and it's like four times as expensive. And I think it's their only 50 mil for the RF mount at the moment. The same goes for the 24 to 105 lens and the 15 to 35, which are bigger than the Sony equivalents. But an advantage is they do have that image stabilization in the lens, which when combined with the new Canon EOS R5's IBIS, 
should make for some really sweet stabilization. Obviously it being Canon, you can use the EF adapter to put all your EF lenses on the RF mount. And this gives you a huge range of options um, to put on the Canon EOS R cameras. But I just think that native lenses are important so you're not switching out adapters um, and changing things constantly. One of the best things about buying a lens over a body is a lens retains its value. So you can buy it now, get loads of views from it, sell it five years later, and it will still be exactly the same lens with the same value. But I think if you're investing right now in Canon EF glass, um, which is from their sort of dying DSLR days, then in five years time, when there's RF equivalents, the EF versions won't be worth necessarily as much. So it's not really an investment to buy those lenses. Also, not one of these lenses balanced properly on either my Weevil S, or my Mosa Aircross 2. And I did get the 15 to 35 on the Aircross 2, but it was shaking a little bit. So um, just something to note there. So if you're a Sony user, you have a lot of E-mount lenses to choose from, whether that's from Sony or third parties. A lot of them are smaller and lighter, which makes it great for travel, um, makes you able to take out more gear and focus more on capturing the action rather than carrying big pieces of glass around. It's also, in my opinion, a better investment because the E-mount just seems to be getting more and more popular. So in a few years time, that lens is still gonna be worth quite a lot. So for me, one of the main reasons I wouldn't move over to Canon is those lenses. I don't wanna invest in two different mounts, the RF mount and the EF mount. And I think Sony has a good range of lenses that are both light and a good value. And with Canon, I'd also probably have to buy a heavier gimbal. Now onto use cases, and this is personal to me, but I like to take my a7 III on to film weddings, to film corporate events, but also to holidays and family events as well. One of the main reasons I can do this is because it's so easy to pick up and use, and also it's small, the lenses are small, so I'm not carrying that much around when I'm on holiday. Something about the Canon EOS R and the lenses would make me not want to take it out on holiday with me, it's just a little bit big, a little bit bulky. Um, but that again, that's just personal opinion. I know a lot of people would. And again, there's people that prefer to use the image stabilization inside the RF lenses, and that's great. And there's also people that will use an adapter with an EF lens. And again, that keeps things small. But I think in terms of keeping things very small and light, the Sonys are the better options, considering you have a lot of small and light lenses to choose from, and the actual body itself is lighter. Finally, I want to mention what's around the corner for Sony. Since we're talking about the EOS R5 and the specs that's due to have, I want to talk about what the next step is for a new Sony camera. I'm skeptical that we're going to see a Sony camera anywhere near as good as the R5 claims to be in 2020. But these companies do tend to use each other as a stepping stone um, and one will get better than the other and the other will take over. And that's sort of how this works as development progresses. And so I reckon in the next year or two, Sony will bring out something that rivals the R5. I'd also wager that the next camera in the Sony A7 series does have a flippy screen because they've just put their first one in the vlogger camera at the ZV-1. I'd also hope that it's got at least 4K 60 or 10 bit. And to be honest, I'd be happy with that limit. On Canon's side, because they're starting to put IBIS in the cameras now, I do see them starting to make smaller and lighter RF lenses without the image stabilization in them. And all of these things together will make Sony and uh, Canon closer than they have been in a long time. So the verdict then as a video shooter, should you switch from Sony to Canon in 2020? I think for someone looking to invest in their first mirrorless camera and doesn't know what system to get into, it really does come down to personal preference. Um, there's not much in it. It comes down to whether you want you know, that image stabilization within the lens, it comes down to whether you want to take it on travels and how much you care about the sizes and the adapters and things like that. Um, I don't think there's many huge disadvantages between each system at the moment, unless you want to film in 4K because at the moment the EOS R does have that crop which I wouldn't necessarily say is useful. But switching your system from one camera system to another means buying more bodies, more lenses, it becomes expensive, it's time consuming and there's definitely a learning curve involved as well. So at the moment I would say it's not worth switching to Canon even when they bring out that EOS R5. And the reason for this is that I think Sony will eventually retaliate with something just as good, if not better. And this will make us glad that we did stay with our current cameras and lenses. Again, I'm not putting Canon down and I'm definitely not saying that Canon users to switch to Sony because Canon is definitely about to have their day. All I'm saying is it's not worth the time and effort required to switch over your system. So that's it from me. I've tried to be as clear as possible and give Sony users clarity on whether 
they should switch to Canon ahead of the R5. Those specs are very, very tempting, but there's a lot of reasons not to switch systems at the moment. Um, but again, most of it's opinion based, but I hope it helped anyway. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts and whether you're a Sony user or a Canon user, and if you're thinking of switching to the dark side. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content like this, then please subscribe and hit that notification button. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.